Some proteins help transport substances. Others have a regulatory communication or defense function. So each um, amino acid has a hydrogen, a radical group, side chain, and amino group that is positive and a carboxyl group that is negative. Amino acids are joined together by peptide bonds in which one of the carboxyl groups um, of the amino acid is covalently attached to the amino group of the other amino acid. Many peptide bom- bonds form polypeptide chains through the process of dehydration. The primary structure of a protein is its sequence of amino acids. Interactions between amino acids cause the primary structure to fold into the secondary structure with the alpha helix or the beta helix. And then the secondary structure folds further into a tertiary structure and two or more polypeptide chains may associate to create a quaternary structure. Since codons encode amino acids and there are 61 of them, um, amino acids may be specified by more than one codon, which is the degenerate code. Codons that specify the same amino acid are said to be synonymous and different tRNAs that accept the same amino acid but have different anticodons are iso-accepting tRNAs. Each different way of reading the sequence is called a reading frame. And also note that um, the genetic code is almost universal except for in termination codes and mitochondrial genes. The initiation codon is usually AUG. And the termination codons are also called stop codons or nonsense codons, which is UAA, UAG, and UGA. In bacterial cells, the first AUG encodes N formal methionine, whereas in eukaryotes it encodes um, just methionine. Note that the code is generally non overlapping. The wobble hypothesis proposed by Crick. Um, says that some non-standard pairing of bases could take place at the third position of the codon, which allows different codons to specify the same amino acids. Now, the wobble rule says that indicates which base in the third position of the mRNA codon can pair with bases at the first position, 5-end, of the anti-codon of the tRNA. Be careful with this. The genetic code consists of 64 codons, which are written from the 5'N to the 3'N as they appear on the mRNA. Make sure that you know how to read this table. Now, the translation of mRNA to protein requires four steps, including tRNA charging, initiation, elongation, and termination. tRNA charging is when the amino acid attaches to the 3' end of the tRNA, in which the base is always adenine. In the first step, the amino acid reacts with ATP, which produces aminosyl AMP and 2 phosphate. And in the second step, the amino acid is transferred to the tRNA and AMP is released to form aminoacyl tRNA, in which the amino acid is linked to its appropriate tRNA. After this tRNA charging, we are ready to begin the process of initiation. Now the ribosome consists of two subunits, a large one that is 50S and a small subunit that is 30S. There is an initiation factor three that binds to the small subunit, preventing the large subunit from binding. This allows the small subunit to attach to the mRNA. Now, a tRNA charge with N-formal methionine forms a complex with the initiation factor 2 and GTP which binds to the initiation codon while initiation factor 1 joins the small unit in order to enhance the dissociation of the large and small ribosomal subunits. Now, all the initiation factors dissociate from the complex and GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. 
and the large subunit joins to create a 70S initiation complex. The shine delgarno consensus sequence in mRNA is required for the attachment of the small subunit of the ribosome. This is initiation in bacteria. FMET tRNA occupies the P site of the ribosome. And then the EF2 GTP and charged tRNA form a complex that enters the A site of the ribosome. After the charged tRNA is placed into the A site, GTP is cleaved to GDP and the EF2 GDP complex is released. A peptide bond forms between the amino acids in the P and A sites, and the tRNA in the P site releases its amino acid. The ribosome moves down the mRNA to the next codon, which is translocation in which requires F EFG and GTP. The tRNA that was in the P site is now in the E site, from which it moves into the cytoplasm. <clears throat> now that the A site is open, um, it's ready to receive another tRNA. When the ribosome translocates to a stop codon, there is no tRNA with an anticodon that can pair with the codon in the A site. So then, RF1 attaches to the A site, and RF3 forms a complex with GTP and binds to the ribosome. Polypeptide is released from the tRNA in the P site. GTP associated with the RF3 is hydrolyzed to GDP. The tRNA, mRNA, and release factors are released from the ribosome. Ending termination. In both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, mRNA molecules are translated simultaneously by multiple ribosomes. However, in prokaryotic cells, transcription and translation are simultaneous, which means the direction of translation goes from the 5 prime end to the 3 prime end, whereas transcription is added on to the 3 prime end of this mRNA. This means that in polyribosomes, the polypeptides associated with ribosomes will be longest at the 3 prime end. Initiation in eukaryotic cells are a little bit different than initiation in bacterial cells. In the first way it's different is that there's a small subunit consisting of the ribosome initiation factors and initiator tRNA um, that binds with the amino acid to form an initiation complex that recognizes the cap and binds there. It scans for the AUG codon which is located in the COSAC sequence. Another difference is that it requires a lot at least seven initiation factors. The cap binding complex also um, plays a role in checking for errors as well as initiating and poly A tails also play a role in binding. Here is a list of the components required for protein synthesis in bacterial cells.